This is the Professional Stepdad, a place where we share stories, strategies, and ideas for men just like you to help answer that one important question, how can I be a better stepdad? Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Episode 33 of the show. Um, Three things that I wanted to talk about today in regards to being a stepdad, being a parent, being a leader. Uh, But first, I want to kind of talk about something that's happened here at the home, something that that uh aha moment that I had. Uh, Last night, my daughter, who is my youngest daughter, she's 12, she was in bed and she gets a little frightened to sleep in her room by herself because she is so afraid of, not the dark per se, she's afraid of like somebody coming in the house and taking her, you know, and things that kids are afraid of. And we had a long conversation last night about trust and how she feels within the home and does she feel safe. And what I found out was is that she absolutely feels safe. She absolutely feels trust. She absolutely loves mom and dad. What's what's really got her over the last few days, and I'm going to say it's about seven days because it falls on me. I did what most people did, which is I went down some sort of a rabbit hole, the plural, um, for all this conspiracy crap that's going on. Um, mainly because, guys, listen, I don't, I don't ever um, subscribe to main media. Never have. Couldn't tell you. I mean, I barely know what the weather is. Other, if it's not on my app. Mainly because I don't. I mean, I just know it's all. It's given to me exactly how they want me to see it. So I wanted to go down this rabbit hole to try to get a little bit more of an explanation of what's going on. And what I learned was is that the rabbit holes, the rabbit hole that you go down will just end up down another rabbit hole, down another rabbit hole. There is literally no end point to it. And I'm saying that because it got me thinking about this movie I watched, National Treasure, where the dad yells at the son because he said, it's a clue, and then another clue, and then another clue, and another clue, and it's always going to be the clues. And what I had to come to terms with was the fact that over the last six days, you know, I've been sharing what I've been learning with my family because I believe it's really big. I mean, my kids are always ask me what I'm doing, so I share with them. And then I caught two things. I caught myself um, looking at my social media or just like, I caught myself uh, expecting a conspiracy, but not just what I was reading, but like I caught myself trying to find the negative or trying to find the reason why somebody was lying to me or trying to find the reason why, oh, that can't be true in just real life. And then it clicked. I'm like, holy shit. I mean, I spent six days on this. There are people that spend years, years going down these rabbit holes. And then they want to know why only the crazy, weird, negative shit comes up in their life. It's because they're, they're, they, they trained, they've trained their subconscious to see the world through a conspiracy, a conspiracy theorist's eyes. And so by saying all the stuff that I've learned in regards to like aliens maybe or may not be true or the president and Q Quan are on or whatever the hell it's called and Obamagate and pizza, whatever crap. Um, I learned that because I was sharing with my family. My kids started to get a little more fear placed into their mind about the world. And then I it kind of like last night was my aha moment. Like I said, I woke the F up because... I am, I am not about fear. I am not about hatred. I am not about pain. I am about positivity and finding the good and taking responsibility for actions, all that stuff. And I was, for for six straight days, I found myself not living my truth. And it's a great moment when you can understand that when you're not living your truth and you're aware of it, you can pop right out of it. That's how it works. It's the ones that stay in it and then allow it to consume them. That's how they go down. Um, anyway, so three things I wanted to talk about today are one i belong to this group it's a private group on facebook it's called the stepdad's den and it's just a place for men to come and congregate and talk about their lives and share their experiences but then this guy gets on uh his name's ian he gets on here and he like lets all these stepdads have it i mean he lets them have it about he's talking about how he cannot believe he's come to a site this is the great part about my show and about what i'm doing and about men like ian he came to this page on Facebook because he wanted to be a better dad, be a better husband, a little bit of guidance, maybe some ideas, some concepts that could help work and to just strengthen his his life. And what he found was 
that all the stepdads on here were literally just complaining. Me, 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 me. Why isn't it working? What do I do? Uh, I mean, just all this. He was just, he just started reading through it, he said, and he just found a whole bunch. I'm going to have him on the show. I have to. I called him. I have to have him on the show. But then I went back to the stepdads. Then I started reading, and it's true. Nine out of 10 posts every day, just on this group alone. And I belong to six, seven groups. Nine out of 10 posts on this um, Facebook group alone is just complaining. And I know what you're going to say. Well, you know, Franco, we need a place to vent. We need a place to like just, you know, kind of let loose. I've said it once and I've said it again. If you can't vent in your own home to your partner, your relationship is not where it's supposed to be. If you can't open up the lines of communication with yourself, with that whole honesty side of you where, where you just have to be real and then try to seek out ways to grow as a man and as a leader, you are wrong. Ian was correct. You know, after reading what he said, and I'll be honest with you, Ian, I got a little offended for about an eighth of a second until I was like, wait. And I went through it, I'm like, wait, holy crap. I mean, there's people on here. I, I'll get, so I don't want to go to it because that's a whole nother show. I can do an I can do an entire show just off of the nine different posts that I that come onto these Facebook groups that where people are just complaining. And um, look, I'm not judging you because you want to complain. I'm not judging you for where you are in your life. I would never be the one to do that. I would never be the one to say it's okay to vent. I mean, or, don't vent. I would never be the one to say it's okay. It, you don't have, you know, it's not good to vent because it is. It's good to it's good to get things out, one hundred percent. But you should have an objective to get things out um, that are um, going to be so you know so you can find real benefit in the next step. Because a lot of the men on here that go in and they and they post on on the pages, they are not looking for. Um, what is the word I'm looking for? They're not looking for anybody to solve their problems. They just want everybody to hear their problems. If you don't believe me, start belong to any group. I don't care if it's a singles group, if it's a mom's group. Hold on. Man, I don't care if it's a singles group. I don't care if it's a mother's group, whatever it might be. Most people don't want you to solve their problems. They just want you to hear their problems. Everybody who comes to you with a problem are not necessarily looking for a solution. I couldn't understand that for a long time. Why do they bring you a problem if they don't want to solve it? Well, I can tell you why. They want to tell you about it, you about it, you about it, you about it, and you about it. And if you foul up the deal and solve the problem, they can't tell you again, you again. They want the attention that goes with the problem. Just, that's the rabbit hole they go down. The rabbit hole of negativity and why me's and poor and the woes. And it's just, uh, so Ian, just know that, uh, your words were heard loud and clear to some men and to some other men you could see on the responses that they gave you. These are the men that are, um, they're going to have a hard time. They really are. Um, so, so I was talking to, uh, this, uh, the stepdad, um, at my basketball gym the other day, and he's been a stepdad for going on four years. He's got four kids. His name's Steve and Steve is really, he's a great guy. I mean, he's just, he's a really great guy. I mean, when, you know that that person that you walk when you find when you first like get introduced to them or you meet them for the first time, whether it's in an open setting or one on one, you just feel like this great energy coming off of them. That's how I felt about Steve, and uh, so then we started talking, and he you could tell he was just a little bit down. I'm like, what well, you know, and we were already in the conversation of what it meant to be a stepdad. And he started saying, you know, I just feel like a failure. I'm like, oh, like, why? Why do you feel like a failure? He goes, well, you know, I'm four years in and I still cannot get that. Like, I feel like I feel like my ability to be that the leader in my home or I feel like the ability I have to be the one that they trust. I feel like I'm failing at that because the kids really aren't showing me the same kind of love that I'm showing them. And I went, okay. Um, and he said, uh, you know, I just, it's like a barometer for my relationship with my, with my wife and myself. And then I was like, wow, that was well put. He's using his children as a barometer on where he is in this world and his family, specifically in his little world that he lives in. And then, you know, I was just really honest with him because that's what you're going to get from me. You're going to just get straight honesty. I told him that, uh, that his first mistake is to believe that using the kids as a barometer to, to who, to, 
the his ability to be a stepdad and his ability to be a great leader and a good husband and a good man but using the kids as a barometer as a, like a, this is where you stand in in this world is bullshit it's wrong it's 100% wrong because um he's he's admitted he freely admitted he jumped into the relationship and his immediate objective was how can i get the kids to love me how can i get the kids to trust me how can i get the kids to see me as the man in the house where they listen to me when i say you know it's time to do the chores or it's time to go to bed and they don't talk back or they don't argue with me or they don't always run to mom how can I get in, how can I get to a place as a man and as a stepdad to where if I am telling the kids, hey, it's time for bed or please don't do that, the mom doesn't look over at me with this like fear in her eyes that I'm going to do something negative to the kids simply because my voice went up one octave. Um, and I was very, like I said, I was very honest with them. I'm like, Steve, look, the problem with you is that you jumped in thinking that you needed to somehow prove to the children that you were the better, you were the person, like you were right for the job. And, um, and you're forgetting about your responsibility to first yourself, then your relationship, and then your kids. Because here, here's, how, here's how the trickle effect goes, guys. Here's, here's how it works. It's very simple. It's not 50 steps. It's not 10 10 phases there, you know, it's not like, uh, um, you know, like you don't need to go off on a weekend trip with a whole bunch of men to learn about your manhood again, to come back to your home, to be the alpha man. Like that's bullshit. All of that is just selling points for individuals that believe that want you to believe that the only way that you can become the great leader man and representative in your home is to follow specific steps taken by uh individuals that that created these steps simply to take you down a path that is not focused on who you are as a man and what i mean by this is every one of us are different every every one of us have different situations some of you are alcoholics some of you are drug addicts some of you are amazing men that have major secrets some of you are just amazing men some of you are pieces of shit and you're afraid to admit it. Some of you are in your relationship right now because you are too afraid to leave. Which is again, don't me don't I don't even want to get started on that conversation. But um his biggest his biggest hiccup in the relationship so far was and Steve, I'm going to Steve I was talking to Steve. Steve, your biggest relationship your biggest hiccup right now on where you are is first you're using the kids as a barometer to who you are as a person and second that you jumped all in on the kids and you forgot about your relationship with your wife oh more important you forgot about you what do i mean by this because you said things like i'm you know i, I just don't feel like I, i'm needed and i don't feel like i'm valued in the home um steve that's that's your inner confidence that's your inner stuff that's stuff that you should be working on first with you trying to figure out wait why the fuck do i get so upset when why do i get so angry when she and I'm just pausing so you guys can fill in the blanks for yourself. And when you don't ask these questions, when you, you don't ask these common questions that you're going to need for you, then you will never be able to properly execute the right plan of attack for your family's love, support, guidance, all that stuff. Because you don't know why you react a certain way. And guess what, Steve? It's okay because we, you've never done the self-work. Right? I can give you a little start point if you want me to give you a little push into the game. Ready? Not your fault, man. It's your environment, how you were raised, where you were raised, how your parents are, all these other stuff that you've probably never decided to dive into and to be honest with. And because of that, they are running your subconscious mind, which are affecting your life right now. And you say things like, well, you know, I just don't feel valued in the home. I don't feel like they need me. Who gives a shit about that, Steve? Who cares? That's not your objective. Your objective is to build this trust and this and lay this foundation within your family to where you can begin to build this good home. This doesn't you can't just go rent a, an amazing home. You know, you can't you can't you can't Airbnb a stepdad's life that is filled with love and 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 gratitude. That's not how it works, man. That's not how it works. You cannot use the kids as a barometer. It's a horrible decision. And then I was and my next question Steve was, "All right, how's your relationship with your wife?" And he goes, "Ah, we're all we do is argue. Of course you do. Let me guess. She doesn't feel like you give her enough attention. Yeah. Wait, how'd you know that? Lucky guess, I guess. So don't use your children, guys, as a barometer for your relationships and for who you are as a man. Don't. 
Stop putting so much emphasis on trying to be this picture perfect stepdad and, and put more focus on being a better leader that is capable of self-reflection. Um, but for a lot of you, it's hard. It's going to be really, really hard. And the reason it's going to be hard is because you were, you were, you were in such a rush for gratitude. You were in such a rush to like, it's like a self gratification to being it's a self gratification and a pat on the back to you when you can brag to your friends and family about how well you're doing as a stepdad or about how well the kids are adjusting and adapting. It's like, um, it's like, why do people post on social media? You know what I love when people post on social media and then they say in like in the comments or maybe it's even on the screen, probably going to take this down later. No, you're not. You're going to take shit down. You, you said that because you want people to pay attention to you. And dads, that's what we're doing. And then it, this kind of parlays back into what Ian said about, you know, all these dads complaining all the time. It's like, why do you need to go on platforms and complain about your life? Why? Like, what is it accomplishing? It's like my dad once told me, complaining is like sitting in a rocking chair. It'll give you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere unless you get off your ass. You got to get off your ass and actually start doing something about it. But the biggest problem with this, we're, we're the vast majority of stepdads begin, sit, and then end the relationship is the fact that you don't know why you do certain things. You don't know why you react a certain way. You don't know why you need that love. You don't know why you need that gratification. You don't know why you need that uh, you're the best type feeling. You don't know why you need it, but you need it. It's a, it's a need. And when you don't get it, you complain about it. And then your relationships take a hit. And then you do what a lot of men do, which is you start making that. And it's a quiet, it's a quiet excuse, guys. It's a quiet little no voice in the back of your head, especially when you're in a, f a family where you are the stepdad, but you have no bio kids, um, where you're like, you know, these, if this doesn't work, I mean, these aren't my kids. I could just leave tomorrow and they probably wouldn't even know I'm gone. And that is a huge, um, I mean, I, please don't do that because... Guys, it's, it's about the children, man. And that's where we have to think. We have to go back and remember this. It's about the kids. So all these people on, on social media and these stepdads and these, and these platforms where you're on there complaining about poor me and why this and my kids don't do that and my wife and I blah, blah, blah. Or, how, or you know, the, the, the very common core one, which is, uh, you know, the bio dad is, is it okay to tell, for me to tell the kids that their dad is a piece of shit? Like things like that. Um. Are reasons why men like myself and other stepdads that who are really just really working their ass off to be just the best that they can be will always constantly be climbing and fighting an uphill battle with the narrative because of men that give us bad names. So, I mean, if you're gonna take anything from that from from this podcast today, if you're gonna take anything from the show, guys, it is that. Stop being in such a rush for self gratification. Stop being, in, st stop trying to trying to um, speed up the process. It is a long, long process and requires tons and tons of personal work, couples work, and then children work. It is. It just. It just is. Um, and if you're not doing the little things, and guys, I preach this all the time. You guys, I, I will be delivering information for you to understand this all i mean it is real simple work on you work on your relationship then work on the kids do it in that order and i guarantee you what seems like a long trip will end up feeling like it happened overnight because you did the work right you did the work on you you did the work on with your partner you did the you did the the, the work needed to understand how to communicate properly with the children within your home like it's so important that you understand that. Like if you don't, if you're not doing the work and all you're doing is fucking complaining, well, then you are going to find yourself in a position where, uh, where you quit, give up, walk away. It's all right. I wasn't cut out for this job. Then you'll have, then you'll have the idiots that you have in your life where they'll say, oh man, you did your best. It's just, you can't help it. They were affected by the way you're blah, 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 and yada, yada. 
love those guys. I love, I love your, I love the, uh, I love the friends in, in life who, uh, <laughs> who justify your, your, uh, your, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The friends in your life who will justify your, your reasons that you should, that you should have quit a long time ago. Right. So just remember, and I think I'm going to do, I'm going to start doing just, I'm going to do an entire show on the me and then the us and then the M. And I know I say I'm going to do that, but sometimes I just jump in this because I get some great headlines, right? I get some great headlines, you know, where, you know, Ian, when Ian posted that on Facebook or yeah, on Facebook, I immediately was like, yes, I got to talk to somebody like that because here's what Ian um, instinctually understands about being a stepdad. Ian understands that it's all on him. It's not anybody else's fault. How his world will, you know, how his world rises and falls is on him. He understands that. And I think he just got to a, a breaking point where he's like, why are every, why is everybody fucking complaining all the time instead of asking real questions? Asking a real question with the, uh, with the intent to apply the advice towards your life, towards growth is great. That's not complaining. That's, that's starting a conversation with, uh, with, a, with a purpose to work on your game. Um, but a lot of these parents don't. Like, they, they just don't. Unfilled. <laughs> anyway, so, okay. So I, I'm going to start doing these shows where I kind of talk about, um, well, I guess I can say that there's really no big structure in this only because there's so much. To, I mean, I, guys, this subject matters I'm going to be able to talk for days about because something new always comes up. It's very repetitive. It's there are a lot of the same players in the game who uh, find themselves living on platforms. Um, but but my objective here is to give you the advice and practical application of ideas and concepts so that you can that you can no longer listen to me. That you don't have to listen to me anymore because you're doing it and you're applying it and it's working and you're and you're and you're happy. I, if you're a, if you are a stepdad who does have an amazing story, who wants to share their wins or their loss with what they learned, I'm all about it, man. Call me, email me, text me. My information is all over this stuff. Just get a hold of me, and we will we will wrap it up. Because I believe that is that for the woke stepdads who understand that that who understand the me us them method. Um, for the woke stepdads that understand that process. It is our responsibility to not perfect it because you can't perfect it, but to um, have as many success stories come out of this process so that when, you know, the little kid that's 13 right now, let's call him Aaron. Aaron uh, grows up and he ends up falling in love with some girl that has kids that he has a place to go and to start from. That's our, that's the only objective, right? Okay, so I'm going to end the, this show with reading something from, uh, from Facebook. Um, and then we'll quickly talk about it. Uh, first and foremost, I will never, um, I'm never going to say anybody's names on here. I don't want to. And the reason I don't want to is because people are stupid. <laughs> Here's, this is what kills me, guys. So people join private groups to complain. All they do is complain. They're complaining, complaining. It's, all, it's fucking literally all over the place. But they go on... They go on social media to complain in a group that they say is private, which if you guys know anything about the way social media works, nothing is private. I can find anything. Nothing's private. And then when you, for instance, for somebody like me who owns a podcast and a show who runs it, um, when I address the question of the problem and then I use the name, people are like, why did you use my name? Well, what do you mean? It's, it's for everybody to see. Yeah, but it's only for those dads to see. Well, hey. I'm using your name because the advice that you're getting on the platform where you complained on is shitty advice. Do you want my help or not? They're more, they're, they care more about people's knowing who asked the question than trying to get an answer to their question. And then some other guy one time where I was answering something, he goes, hey man, you can't, you can't just call up, you can't just put people's names on here. I go, well, why not? He goes, well, because then what happens is, is that there are, ev- there are men in this group who will copy and paste that message, find their spouse or their, their wife, and they'll send that message to them, and it starts arguments which causes divorce. And first, I'm like, oh, 
I, I didn't I didn't know that. I thought we were part of a private group. Why are we letting people like that in? So thank you for telling me and, and for confirming that there there is no checks and balance into this group. Appreciate that. And second, you're telling me that they send the message to their wife and then their wife was like, hey, what the hell? You're on the stepdad group talking shit about me or complaining about the kids. What the hell? In my eyes, the way I see it, because this is the way I view things, if you have the balls to go on there and complain and then your wife finds out about it and it causes you to pr actually communicate with her about the problem, then that's a win. It's a, it's a win in my book. Does that, does that mean that you're gonna win? I don't know, probably not. You're, you're in big trouble. You know, you'll do what most men do is go straight into deny, 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 deny. Instead of accepting, yeah, I guess I should have came to you earlier and talked to you about this, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to complain about you and the kids on the internet. But I guess that was my way to vent because I don't think I can talk to you. Would you like to work on it? What I just said, guys is for some of you is a foreign subject and you don't understand it communication is key all right guys so i'm gonna read this so um and i'm gonna kind of paraphrase it because again i don't want to be specific on these questions um how do you guys keep going <laughs> clean. i feel my oh okay cool so this stepdad is wondering why the teenage kids in his house, the stepkids in his house, aren't meeting his expectations of behavior. Um, it wasn't in their life. If I was okay, my kids are teens and I wasn't in their life long enough to really influence their behavior. So I get, so I get, I won't change them overnight if ever. Um, and keep him in Okay. So this is, this is, this is very typical and classic. Um, and the advice that were get, that are given by the men are going to be very typical and classic, right? Which is a lot of the advice that you're going to get from the men on this subject matter, which is, you know, the whole, like, my, my, my kids aren't meeting my expectations of discipline and rule following. And why? Why aren't, they, why aren't they meeting my expectations? Why can't they just do what I want them to do? Simple. But the, quest, the answers that, he are, that he's getting are going to be given to, given the, the advice given to him right now that I'm reading is advice from men who have never done the self-work, right? Never done the self-work. So then they are leaning towards the way they were raised and how they do it. You know, from ranging from, um, there's really nothing you can do about it. Bullshit. Honestly, you know, these are teenagers. You can't. Bullshit. All of it is bullshit. You can always do something about it. I don't care how old they are. Always. Um, ranging from, you know, like I just said, you, you, there's nothing you can do about it to, uh, you know, well, take their phones away and take their video games away and take this and take that and put them here and do that. And that is probably the way they parent or the way they were parented. And that's wrong too. Am I telling you to fucking roll over and, and play dead when it comes to like you, if you, I'm not telling you to let them walk all over you in any way. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, is that your kids step in and bio probably don't listen to you because you're not talking to them correctly. Frank, what do you mean you're not talking to them correctly? Frank, oh, I don't understand what, you, what you're saying. Okay, cool. Every one of us has a language and a communication level in order to get through to us. Mine is words of affirmation. When my wife tells me, um, thank you, or I appreciate your help, honey, or you're doing a great job, or I really love that, or you're so smart. These little words of gratitude, you know, these words of affirmation for me are big. This is why I read and I have things around me that I can read and, and kind of, you know, regurgitate on a daily basis so I can give it to my children. And my wife's communication is uh, physical touch. So if I go a week without touching my wife, Let's, and when I mean by touching her, I mean from, from ranging from sex to a simple brush on the shoulder. You can see it building up inside of her to where she'll pop and then she'll get pissed off and upset about something. And it's because I'm not communicating with her correctly. Best way I know I've learned to communicate with my wife, especially when we're in an argument, is to just sit her down and to hold her hand and, and just literally just let her know that I'm there to listen. And I hope she is there to listen to. And then we actually communicate with one another on how to properly manage our life and our kids and our family and our, in this world, this crazy world that we're living in. Um, 
But guys, this is all coming from the self-work. This is all coming from the time that my wife and I put towards our relationship and we started to treat it more like a business than we started to treat it as a burden. You know what I mean? So that is really, really big when it comes to um, how you identify with the people in your life. And more important, it's um, it really it, it speaks volumes when you can get to a point in your relationship where because everybody gets pissed, right? Everybody gets mad. Arguments happen all the time. But when you can get into a point of your relationship where you can you can accept responsibility for your actions and you can say, I'm sorry to one another. And then you can sit down and talk about it and then execute the plan. Then you'll win. That's how it works. So if you're one of the stepdads that posts on these platforms and complain all the time, are you really taking this? I, I would like to know, are you really taking this, the answers or the ideas that people are giving you? And are you really executing on them? Or are you just reading them and responding because you're, you're getting the attention that you're so desperately needing? Good question. Okay, guys. Um, till tomorrow or the next day, depending on when I can jump back on here and give you guys the information um, that I'm that I'm kind of building and I'm loving, guys. I will. The more the more the more interaction I get and the more people I talk to is the more I want to speak about this subject because I'm trying to share as many stories and ideas that I can so that um, it's relatable to your life. Cause I said, we, we're all in a different point of our, our life right now, but it's relatable so where you can actually build on it and work on it. And so it can change your life instead of keeping it in a position in, uh, of going nowhere. Right? So, all right. Um, till, until then, talk to you guys later. Thank you, everybody.